Retin Yuma started. Um, that was good. that was actually good agenting. We we shared an agent with the director uh, Jim Mangold, and we found out from our agent that one of Jim's favorite movies is Three Ten to Yuma, the original 1957 movie, um, which I had seen as a kid. Uh, I grew up in Texas, and my dad's a huge Western fan, so I, I myself am a huge Western fan. So when we heard that he liked that movie, Michael and I. We went and rented the movie again, thought about how you could modernize it and update it, uh, went in and met with Jim and Kathy Conrad's his producing partner, and just had two or three conversations with them about here's what we could do. We didn't want to, um, we didn't want to just remake the 1957 movie, uh, which was based on an Elmore Leonard short story too. We wanted to, we saw what was missing in the in in the original movie. The the original movie is a, it's almost like a two-act play. And we thought what was missing was the middle chapter of that, of, of putting these two guys on the road, two guys who um, come from opposite ends of the spectrum, and then said, why don't we take uh, the character Christian Bale, ends up playing Dan Evans, uh, take his son, who's barely hinted at in the original movie, and put the son on the road and, and tell the movie like it's a morality tale, uh, for the son's soul. And that to us was how best we could modernize it was uh, Michael always cited those old Nike commercials with Charles Barkley who said, I'm not a role model. And we said, how does a blue collar dad in America right now compete with all of these messages and these athletes and these million dollar you know, um, salaried uh, players who, the dad's just trying to put food on the table and the, and the kid is worshiping some guy who's telling him the opposite message and we thought that would make a great you know let's put it back in the wa old west and put it between a gunslinger and a rancher and uh, put that on the road and that's where that all came from Ninety nine percent of the time you're not you're just writing with a, a faceless character in your mind you know um, and then when casting happens, sometimes that does affect the way that you do rewrites. Um, we have a movie called Wanted that opens next week, and we spent months coming up with dialogue uh, uh, for this one character to kind of explain the history of this group of assassins that the movie is featured on. Morgan Freeman gets cast to play that part, and all of a sudden we realize we don't have to spend a lot of time explaining because if Morgan Freeman says it, He's played God in two movies. He could tell you the sky is green and the grass is blue and you'd believe it. So um, you can, it definitely affects the way you do the subsequent drafts, but when you're first writing, it could be anybody. And, and we've seen it enough times where you're thinking, okay, I'm going to write this for a young guy you know, who's coming out of college and they end up casting somebody much older. So you just have to, um, you have to tell the story the way you want to tell it and then adapt after the casting happens. Now we're doing a, an adaptation of um, a Robert Ludlum book called The Mattery Circle, and we have Denzel Washington um, attached to play one of the leads um, going in. So we know that before we ever type fade in, you know it's going to be Denzel. So you definitely in your mind, you picture it differently than had we not cast him. Um, now whether or not he ends up doing the movie, you never know. So there could be a rewrite coming you know, in the future. <laughs> Uh, Wanted was a, a comic book, um, that, a limited edition comic book, six, six issues, that they ended up kind of compiling into what they call a graphic novel, um, written and created by this guy named Mark Millar and J.G. Jones, and uh, these two guys wrote this really um, uh, outlandish, acerbic, um, uh, nihilistic, a uh, book that was like nothing Michael and I had seen. We had just been given the first issue of the book um, by Universal, had snapped up the rights to it, and Universal asked us if we wanted to adapt it, and we said yes, and we um, started working just from that first issue. And the second issue came out while we were working, and that sort of formed the first act of the movie. Usually movies are told in three acts. And so the intro was those um, those first two issues. Well, the third issue came out and went in a totally different direction than where we were going. And so we just said we want to keep uh, keep going in the direction we were going, and the studio agreed. 
And so we wrote um, a, uh, uh, you know, a script based on this kid who gets out of college and uh, is working in a cubicle and his girlfriend's sleeping with his best friend and his boss yells at him and he's looking around saying, is this all there is, you know, which all, I feel like all of us went through when we first got out of college. And, um, or a lot of us did, unless you were lucky. And then he is uh, walking through a grocery store and the most beautiful woman in the world walks up to him and says, um, I knew your father. And he says, my father left the week I was born. And she says, no, your father died yesterday. He was the greatest assassin of all time. We think it's genetic. We're bringing you in. And then we're off and running. So that's, that's the movie. And then we got this great director, this Russian man, uh, Timur Bekmamadov, who uh, is a visual madman. And um, yeah, so if you've seen the trailers at all, or by the time you see this, you've seen the movie, you can see what he did for us too. Hmm.